If anyone thinks that there's a question having, who's heard me, who thinks there's a question I answered poorly or inadequately or badly or failed to answer at all and would like to challenge me, I'd happily give them five minutes. But I've, I have, so to say, shot my bolt otherwise. Is, is, is there anyone who would like to challenge me? Yes. Please. If there is no God, why do you spend your whole life trying to convince people that there isn't? Why don't you just stay home? Was the <laughs> Can you repeat that? So was the question... Oh, the, the question is, uh, if, there, if there is no God, why spend your life and career uh, trying to refute that? Why not just uh, leave it alone and stay home? Fair enough? Um, well, it's, it's not my... It isn't my whole career, uh, for one thing. It's become a, a major preoccupation of my life, though, in the last eight or nine years, especially since uh, September 11, 2001, to try and help generate an opposition to theocracy and its depredations internationally. That, that, that is now probably my main political preoccupation to help people in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Israel, so resist those who sincerely want to encompass the destruction of civilization and sincerely believe they have God on their side in wanting to do so. A thing, maybe I will take a few minutes just to say uh, something that I find repulsive about especially monotheistic messianic religion. Um, in, it, with a large part of itself, it quite clearly do, wants us all to die. It wants this world to come to an end. You can tell the yearning for things to be over uh, whenever you read any of its real texts or listen to any of its real, authentic spokesmen. Not the uh, sort of the pathetic apologists who sometimes masquerade for it. Those who talk, there was a famous uh, spokesman for this in, in Virginia until recently, uh, about the rapture. Uh, say that you know, those of us who have chosen rightly will be gathered to the arms of Jesus, uh, leaving all of the rest of you behind. If we're in a car, it's your lookout. That car won't have a driver anymore. If we're, if we're a pilot, that's your lookout. That plane will crash. We will be with Jesus, and the rest of you can go straight to hell. Uh, the, the eschatological element that is inseparable from Christianity, if you don't believe that there is to be an apocalypse, there is going to be an end. Uh, a, a, a separation of the sheep and the goats, a condemnation, a final one, uh, then you're not really a believer. And the, the contempt for the things of this world shows through all of them. It's well put in an old rhyme from a, an English uh, exclusive brethren sect. Uh, it says that we are the pure and chosen few, and all the rest are damned. There's room enough in hell for you. We don't want heaven crammed. Um, you can tell it when you see the extreme Muslims talk. They cannot wait. They cannot wait for death and destruction to overtake and overwhelm the world. They can't wait for, uh, for a, 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 what I would call, without ambiguity, a final solution. When you look at the Israeli settlers, uh, paid for often by American tax dollars, deciding that if they can steal enough land from other people and get all the Jews into the promised land and all the non-Jews out of it, then finally the Jewish people will be worthy of the return of the Messiah. And there are Christians in this country who consider it their job to help this happen so that Armageddon can occur. So that the painful business of living as humans and studying civilization and trying to acquire learning and knowledge and health and medicine and to push back the front can all be scrapped and, and the, the cult of death can take over. That to me is a hideous thing in, in eschatological terms, in end times terms, uh, on its own. A hateful idea, a hateful practice, and a hateful theory, but very much to be opposed in our daily lives, where there are people who sincerely mean it, who want, who want to ruin uh, the good relations that could exist between different peoples, nations, uh, races, countries, tribes, ethnicities, um, who, who say, who openly say, they love death more than we love life and who are betting that with God on their side, they're right about that. So when I say, in, as the subtitle of my book, that I think religion poisons everything, I'm not just doing what publishers like and coming up with a provocative subtitle. I mean to say it infects us in, the, in our most basic integrity. It says we can't be moral 
without Big Brother, without a totalitarian permission. It means we can't be good to one another. It means we can't think with, without this. We, we must be afraid. We must also be forced to love someone who we fear. The essence of sadomasochism. Uh, the essence of abjection. The essence of the master-slave relationship. And that knows that death is coming and can't wait to bring it on. I say this is evil. And uh, though I do some nights stay home, I enjoy more uh, the nights when I go out and fight against this ultimate wickedness and ultimate stupidity. Thank you. Thank you.